Is it a Monday in April? Yes. Time for another Mock Draft Monday on Locked on Bengals. Let's go! You are Locked on Bengals. Your daily Cincinnati Bengals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network. Your team every day. Bengals fans and welcome to another episode of the Lockdown Bengals podcast. I'm your host Jake Lisko. He's your host James Rapine. We're part of the Lockdown podcast that we're here on Lockdown Bengals covering your Cincinnati Bengals every day with all the latest news and analysis you need to stay up to date going into the draft throughout the offseason going into the regular season whenever you need it. We're there for you here on YouTube anywhere you get your podcast. If you're new to the show and you're looking for that daily analysis please hit the subscribe button. Also if you like what you do and you haven't hit the button you can do that. Makes it really easy to access the content, helps us out, and we appreciate it. James, today we dive back into another Mock Draft Monday. We're back on the PFF simulator today. We got through three mocks last time we did a Mock Draft Monday. Today, we're back to just doing one, but to spice things up, we're adding a whole round. That means five picks, four rounds. Uh We're crazy on the Lockdown Bengals podcast here, James. You haven't been more excited for a Mock Draft Monday ever. That's why I hit you with the let's go before the intro. Jake Lisko is as excited as I've seen him. And I think Bengals fans would be excited if the board played out this way. I wouldn't because the Vikings take Brock Bowers. By the way, the Vikings aren't going to take Brock Bowers, but Brock Bowers off the board. Uh, Roma Dunze off the board. Talise Fawaga to Brian Callahan and the Titans because Joe Alt goes to the Giants. Hey, if you're the Giants, you got to build around Daniel Jones and that quarterback makes sense. Olu Fashanu almost falling to the Bengals gets picked at 16. Brian Thomas to the Colts at 15. Quinion Mitchell to the Raiders at 13. Dallas Turner off the board to the Saints. Layatu Latu off the board at 17. And so, Jake, it's Jerzon Newton, Johnny Newton, Byron Murphy, Terry and Arnold, JC Latham, Nate Wiggins, Amarius Mims. Hey, say what you want. Some really good dudes on the board. And, and I, I think that's the beauty of this 18th pick, Jake, is – no matter how you slice it, there's usually someone that we hold in high regard available when the Bengals are on the clock at 18. Maybe it doesn't break that way on draft night, but it feels like the chances are pretty high that there's going to be a high-end defensive tackle, high-end offensive tackle, a high-end player overall available at number 18. Yeah, I think there will certainly be a high-end player, and it will be a position that fits. There's no real way to to worst case scenario it where it's an actual doomsday for the Bengals when you're picking 18. When you're picking at the back of the first round, you could say, ah, man, none of these guys we want actually will fall. And we've seen that kind of happen for the Bengals a little bit the last couple of years where they haven't gotten one of the guys that we were hoping would fall to them, even if we liked the Dax Hill pick a couple of years ago. And you could understand the upside with an athletic edge rusher like Miles Murphy. This year, picking much earlier in the round with the depth of talent at the top of the draft, the four quarterbacks expected to be picked at least before the Bengals pick at 18, a number of wide receivers that will be picked before the Bengals pick at 18. There will be somebody there, whether it's a defensive tackle, whether it's an offensive tackle, whether it's a corner, whether it's Brock Bowers, there will be a player available to the Bengals. Yeah, baby. That we like. Now, a lot of, Not machine mocks, let's call them. Expert mocks do have Brock Bowers available to the Bengals at 18. And there's a realistic chance that happens if the teams picking ahead of the Bengals can't convince themselves that either their offensive coordinator will know how to use Brock Bowers, that he fits the offense, or that it's worth using a pick on a big slot type who can line up in line a little bit, depending on your opinion of Brock Bowers, or if they see him as a guy who can line up in line more or less. So there there might be some creativity required to draft back Brock Bowers early, but in this scenario, he's not available. So you're considering Newton, you're considering Murphy, you're considering Arnold, you're considering Latham, you're considering Mims, I think is the primary guys that you're considering. If you're the Cincinnati Bengals GM at 18, and those are the guys available to you here. I think Nate Wiggins from the way, you know, we've talked about this from the way he weighed in has lost some of his first round, at least mid-first round value, might still get picked in the first round. 
Yep. And and Cooper DeGene is a guy that maybe we haven't talked about enough, but is a guy that doesn't feel like a direction the Bengals need to go. And that's why we haven't talked about him. They don't need another versatile defensive back. I would no. argue they have Correct. enough. Yeah, it, they, they've bolstered. They made that a priority in free agency and they've spent multiple day one and day two picks to, to bolster that over the past couple of years. And so unless it's a high end corner, I don't see a secondary pick, you know, CB one type. And I don't think they'll necessarily view Cooper as that. Not that he couldn't help, of course. Uh, but to me, it's four guys, Newton, Murphy, Latham, Mims. And I think our listeners, a lot of them will say, take Newton. I think the Bengals have Murphy ahead of Newton. Me just speculating, a full disclosure. I'm in on one of these tackles here, in offensive tackles. Latham or Mims, that's where I would go if this board plays out the way it does. I get it. Murphy and Newton are awesome. Adding one of those would be huge. I also think that the drop-off, and we've seen it when we've done some of these mock draft Mondays, the drop-off at offensive tackle, it is risky. And sometimes in this PFF simulator, it doesn't happen. I think in real life, it will happen. I think offensive tackles are going to fly off the board. So I don't know about you, Jake. I'm leaning either Mims or uh, or Latham here because I, I just think that offensive tackle takes – it breaks the tie when it's close, and I do think that these four prospects are really close. Yeah. Uh, I think that I agree with you after recent – a recent experience where we've seen that the the offensive tackles don't make it to the second round and you're just not getting a premium offensive tackle if you don't take one with the Bengals 18th pick and in a class where you can get a really really good offensive tackle prospect for hopefully the last time for a long time because you're not going to be picking so early in the near future you capitalize on the opportunity you could also make that argument for defensive tackle I, th I think there's maybe a little bit of a better chance that you get one at the back of the first round, but maybe recent history would tell you that you're wrong there too. I would also look at the trade uh, opportunities here with four players we're pretty comfortable with. I wouldn't want to go back all the way to 25 though. That's the top trade uh, interest offered by PFF there with the Green Bay Packers at 25 looking to come up probably for like Cooper DeGene knowing the pack. I don't know. Uh, I'm just talking about the Packers out of the side of my mouth now, but I know you're pretty high on Marius Mims in the last I, week in particular. You've really kind of come to a realization there. Yeah, I and, and this is that time of year where you, you start to find your guys. And I know there's people worried about the playing time. I don't view Mims as a project. I know he needs, it like has things to work on, but he, he also just needs to get experience. And that, that's what I would say. is It's not like he has 35 starts and there's all these issues. He just hasn't gotten on the field to, to iron out some of those things. And you're in a position to take a guy like Mims. So that's who I would take. Consensus would take J.C. Latham. And even without the testing, he's ahead of Mims on the consensus board, whether you look at big boards, whether you look at just mock drafts and those type of things. So I'm fine with Latham if you're gearing that way. It feels like we haven't taken Latham in a long time. I think he's like 13th on offensive line consensus, 13th overall. So I'm fine with Latham if you're leaning that way. I do believe in Mims. I love the upside, and, and I'm totally comfortable taking him here at 18. Too. The consensus board does have Latham slightly ahead of Mims. Also, you can see um, the ADP in the PFF simulator has Latham slightly ahead of Mims, but it's very close. And, and the 21 versus 23 in PFF. Uh, yeah. Audio. yeah, sorry about that. And, and the tiebreaker could just be that we have any sort of athletic testing for Marius Mims and, and we yeah. just do not for JC Latham any educated assessment of his athleticism comes from eyeballing tape from from eye test and he is not clearly he is not a, a top end athlete but he moves better than you would expect for a man of his size and, and of his build but Marius Mims has the same kind of build at six seven three forty compared to Latham's, what, about 6'6", 340? Mm -hmm. and, and he carries that weight so differently. Mm -hmm. As I've said on this podcast before, one of the lowest body fat percentages on the Georgia team. I know we've taken him before. I'm happy to take him again here using that athletic testing as a tiebreaker. But I, I do really like Latham's tape and would be comfortable with him as well. But you, you talk about a, a ceiling swing with yep. Mims where you don't necessarily need him to play right away. You can let him learn for a little bit behind Trent Brown, and, and you can talk me to Marius Mims really quickly. 
And maybe he takes that job midway through the season. Maybe he takes that job in camp. I think the mm-hmm. sky is really the limit for Marius Mim. So we will take him. We will circle back and see what is available in round two coming up next. Today's show is brought to you by Game Time. You shouldn't have to sweat it out when looking for last minute tickets. Game Time, well, they take all the frustrations out of finding tickets, whether it's Reds tickets, whether it is heck, NFL draft tickets, maybe you're looking for concert tickets. Well, all of the tickets you need for your next, uh, for the next big event that you want to attend, they're on the Game Time app. They have killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat so you know exactly what you're getting, lowest price guarantees. And the all-in price, what does that mean? It means there are no hidden fees with game time. And right now, you are going to get $20 off your first purchase. All you have to do is download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on NFL for $20 off. Again, that's the game time app. Create an account and use code locked on NFL for $20 off. Terms apply and use code locked on NFL, L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N NFL for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. Second round, James. We would not have gotten one of the tackles we would have been comfortable with in the second round. Oh. Sniped by one pick, Kingsley Suomatia, who is my favorite second round idea at tackle going at 48 to the Jacksonville Jaguars. And what direction are you thinking here, James? I, I know you love that second round receiver idea right now. I know you think that's where the value is. Is that where we're looking first or well, looking elsewhere? It, it's interesting because people hear that and they run with it. I, I think that there's a scenario where the run happens before 49 and you, you have oh, yeah. to punt on the idea of a receiver. So let's look at the uh, available receivers right now. Roman Wilson, Ricky Persall, Jermaine Burton, Keon Coleman, Jalen Polk, Jalen McMillan, there's one guy of that group to me that could get 49 buzz. And I know a lot of people are in on Ricky Persall. I'm worried that the Bengals view him as a slot only. And so to me, Jermaine Burton, he's transferred to about 52 different schools. He's attended more colleges than you and me combined, Jake. And so I think it's Keon Coleman potentially. And then that's it. Like Roman Wilson, maybe, but the production isn't there. It doesn't really line up. And so when I say second round receiver, I'm talking about the Troy Franklins, maybe Lad McConkey, uh, maybe Keon Coleman. But there's a very real chance where the bottom does drop out a little bit and you punt on it at 49 and you go to round three and, and see what's available. So to me, I don't love the, the Keon Coleman pick, but he's the only one here that I, I would consider at 49, I think, because I just think Ricky Purcell, they're going to view him as a slot only, even though I do like his game. And and he clearly has a top of second round grade right now. Keon Coleman does on the board that we're working on with Joe Goodberry as we do every year. Just 21 years old at the time of the draft, which is a big factor in his favor. It's something that when you see guys that don't test the best, and they're still really young. This happened to Tyler Boyd, for example. Yes, it did. They they still have and T Higgins too, actually. Yep. The, they can still put it together in the NFL. And and there's reason to believe that Coleman could be the kind of player that, that you would be looking for at, at wide receiver for this offense. And you could you could see the fit. Ricky Purcell, Roman Wilson, a little bit older, both of them. Actually, I think significantly older. Roman Wilson going to be 23. Ricky Purcell going to be 23 and a half at the time of the draft. And I, I actually like Persall's tape a fair sure. amount. And and Roman yeah. Wilson had a great senior bowl and and maybe is a little bit underrated by by some, but the overall profile there tells me that the Bengals would certainly shy away in the second round. And of these guys, I think Coleman is the one that they would be considering here in the second round, just from a analytics check marks, check check boxes checked. That that's the guy that checks them for for the Bengals outside of that, looking at some of the other players at the top of the board here for PFF, Zach Frazier, the interior offensive lineman center from West Virginia. If you still believe in Jatavion Sanders in the second round, you can take him here. I, I don't think that that's where I am on Jatavion Sanders at this point, but maybe the Bengals are with their tight end yeah. thirst. Adisa Isaac, maybe the last player at edge. I know you're not very keen on picking an edge player 
aggressively with a premium pick. Yeah. In, in most scenarios, Ruka Rovero, who we talk about a lot in the second round, Jonathan Brooks, if you believe in Brooks' ability to overcome that knee injury, which remains to be seen, the running back from Texas. Chris yeah. Jenkins, Chris if Jenkins. you if you're a Chris Jenkins believer, also there, Christian Haynes. But there's nobody jumping out at me and saying, you know, you have to pick this guy here, which is why. Yeah. Besides Zach Frazier, who we've taken before, we've gone tackle into Zach Frazier before, which I, I would like to do again. But if we wanted to do something different for the sake of doing something different, I would actually be back at wide receiver. Yeah, I, I'm between two guys here. And part of it is for the lack of variety with Zach Frazier. We've done that before in this PFF mock in round two. To me, it's it's two guys. It's Rook Aroraro and it's Keon Coleman. And, and those are the two I land on. I, I think it's a little early for Kyrie Jackson out of Oregon, the corner. He's the top corner available, according to PFF. So that's where I'm at. Uh, you can break the tie. I'm totally comfortable with Rook, comfortable with Keon. We know I like my weapons. Uh, he's he's probably the last one in that tier before it does drop off some. I do wonder what he will be in the NFL, but I do think right away he could contribute in the slot. You could put him outside some, and, and he could help you. I do wonder if they'll view him as the the future T long term, and that's that's kind of a question. At the same time. If you want to go that route, I'm fine with it. I'm also fine with going with Rook. Those are my two. I would, I just, for those not watching on YouTube, navigated over to the defensive interior section just to see what other players are there because I know they're much lower on Tavandre Sweat and Michael Hall than perhaps some sure. are. Uh, and Rook Rovero actually is very divisive as far as our film graders go between Draft Guy Jared and, and Sands. Like we've, got, we've got a big split on those guys, his consensus has him more at the top of the third round than at this point in the second round. Tavondre Sweat, by consensus, is is this is this is exactly where he should be picked. PFF much lower on him, and I know we picked him in. I think we picked him in the second round of one of our three last week. He's got by far the highest film grades out of the guys available on this list, and I want to shout out Brandon Dorless here as well. As a guy that I think could make sense for the Bengals, but this is probably just a little bit earlier than you'd want to pick him. And I'm sure if we scroll down quite a ways, Mason Smith there, who's been recently mocked to the Bengals in the second round, not somebody that James and I would consider here. I would consider Tavondre Sweat here, James, again. Sure. Um, but Keon Coleman, you can make an argument that he's a, a big slot right away. He can compete outside. He, he's not necessarily a guy that can only play one role. He can yep. be a yards after catch guy. I think that's actually a strength in his game, uh, a short area quickness guy. Uh, despite not having the long speed, where where it shows up for him is the the quick agility in and out of breaks. He should be good in the short and intermediate part of the field immediately, even if he doesn't have the long speed. So that's where you can come back to Keon Coleman. I think that this will be the first time he picked Keon Coleman here in the second round, and there is some risk there. Yeah. Uh, but you could talk me into Keon Coleman here. Yeah. I mean, that's the way it feels like you're leaning. Uh, I, I probably let's go with Keon to switch it up. I think Rook is, is too tempting at this stage, but I also think that we can get some defensive line help with one of those, uh, round three picks. So let's just, for the sake of it, go wide receiver. Let's go Keon Coleman. And, uh, and then we can circle back. We have three picks to make Jake three pick 80 pick 97 and pick 115. We will do that coming up next. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. And a lot of us spending spend our lives wishing we had more time. And the question is, time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. And therapy can help you do what's that, whether it's following the NFL draft as close as anyone, whether it's breaking down film, whether it's listening to Locked on Bengals, whatever your hobby is, BetterHelp can help you make time for what's important. And if you've thought about trying therapy, give BetterHelp a try because it's entirely online. It's convenient. It's flexible. It's going to fit any schedule. And it's really, really easy to get started. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire and you will get matched with a therapist. And you can switch therapists at any time for free. 
Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H E L P.com slash locked on. Third round. Got three picks to make, James. We're going to have to speed up a little bit here. And Let's just looking at some of the guys that we discussed with the last pick before we get into it. Jonathan Brooks, of course, picked. Jalen Wright picked. We didn't talk about him, but a halfback I would have been happy to pick in the third round. Tavondre Sweat goes just three picks. Before our pick 80, Javon Baker, it, a wide receiver, I would have really liked one pick before we pick at 80. And the wide receiver run did happen. Yeah, uh, I was looking and that's at the that. argument. Yep, that's the argument for it, for sure. And, and here in the third round, your top wide receiver options, Johnny Wilson, Jamari Thrash, Malachi Corley, Brendan Rice, who would all be fine third round picks, I think, but are a step down, I, I think. You never know in what's going to uh, maybe not right, but like Corley feels like a slot only right now. Johnny Wilson feels like more of a project than than Keon Coleman. I I think it might end up being a tight end. He's just built <laughs> built for it. Uh, but there are some good players available. Blake Fisher falling to round three. The double down at tackle, uh, I think, could certainly happen here. But you mentioned Tavondre Sweat, and I know a lot of people have Sweat at, at forty nine. I think there's a very real chance he does fall to eighty. And, and, and does fall to the third round. And the Bengals may end up having a third round grade on him. And a lot of NFL teams can end up having a third round grade on him. So just throwing that out there. But here, obviously, we're in the defensive tackle market. I think the interior offensive line is certainly something we're looking at now at this stage of the draft. This is when we really start to consider running back as well. Uh, cornerback is always in play. But to me, Michael Hall Jr. still being there. This is why you put potentially pass on Rook is because the wide receiver run happened where you get that guy that can play outside and inside and you still have a Michael Hall jr. You still have a Dwayne Carter and you still have some options as far as interior offensive line. Uh, Cooper BB still there. I think he's probably the top guy available. Cedric Van Praan out of Georgia, Christian Mahogany out of Boston college, some names to keep in mind. Cooper BB would be the one for me uh, out of that group, but yeah, Blake Fisher still there too. So if you did want to double down at tackle, that one would be interesting. But to me, uh, I think there are some interesting interior spots, especially at defensive tackle. Yeah, I don't think Michael Hall is there in the third round. I think Maybe. Sweat has a. I think Sweat has a better chance to make it to eighty than Hall. He just has a special pass rushing ability that doesn't really exist in large quantities in this draft. And maybe he should have gone back for one year. I don't know if anybody actually thinks that. Maybe he needs to round out his game. Maybe he needs a little bit of time. Mike Hall, how old is he? Just trying to find him in our sheet here. I am not seeing him. This is insane. Is he not in our sheet? There he is. He is turning 21 after the draft. Can't yep. even have a legal beer to celebrate being drafted. Michael Hall. And like I said, really good athletic, athletic testing and, and a really strong pass rushing profile. And I know yep. a lot of you are thinking, they need to get better stopping the run up front defensively. I'm not taking McKinley Jackson here. I'm not taking Christian Boyd or Logan Lee or the uh, George, Evan Justin Anderson, Rogers. Yeah. Florida Atlantic, just, Justin Rogers. I'm not taking those body types here in the third round, but if I were to take a defensive tackle to start, I, I would take Michael Hall if he were available. If Blake Fisher is available, which he won't be, I would sprint in the pick for Blake Fisher and happily double down a tackle with Blake Fisher in, in the third round, but Trey Benson, he's available in the third yeah. round. Also very happy to pick Trey yeah. Benson in the third round. So those are the ones that stand out to me. I think that, you know, if, if we're, if we're acknowledging that Michael Hall is actually there, happy to take Michael Hall, because I think there's a big drop off after Michael Hall looking at this list. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm obviously comfortable doing that. I think, this idea that they have to take a nose tackle on day two, it's all about value and in, in how they're approaching it is, is seems to be the right way just with visits. And again, you shouldn't read too much into visits, but taking the big body nose tackle, those guys go on day three. They just do. Mm -hmm. Now, if sweat is this all world guy and they view him that way, maybe he goes day two. And that's why I say there's a chance that he falls to 80. There's a very real chance on, on Friday night of the draft Everyone's like, oh, my God, Tavondre Sweat is still there. Well, I got to take him. And who knows if they take him? I'm not saying that's a lock. 
Michael Hall there at eight, at 80, I, I'm fine with it. And there's a chance. And when you throw in the age, I say we do it, Jake. I say we take advantage of the simulator. We'll grab Michael Hall here and the running back run, meaning there was a running back pick. Trey Benson, Bucky Irving, both picked between the Bengals' 80th pick and their compensatory pick in the third round. Blake Fisher goes just a couple picks later. Blake Corum also drafted. And what else were we just Malachi Corley to the, to the Ravens. That's interesting. Yeah, that's um, annoying. Yeah, Cedric Van Praan, Brendan Rice still there. I don't think he will be, but he could be. Dominic Pooney uh, available. I, I think you, you want to address the interior of the offensive line. That's a guy that could certainly do it. Yeah, I think I think Dominic Pooney would be my pick here. Just just squ- skimming the top of the PFF board a little bit. I think that's a guy that can play inside in the NFL. Maybe even is best served to go inside in the NFL. I think there are some people that really like Cedric Van Praan from Georgia. Sure. Yeah. Uh, but Dominic Pooney is a guy that I would be pretty comfortable with here. I, me too. He, he's the one that pops out. Let's take him and see what we can do in round four. Because what you hope is that the running back you would take here is still there next round, or the corner you would take here is still there next round. And I don't think anyone's going to have an issue with us doubling down with a, another offensive lineman. So let's do it. The the downside I'd point out for Pooney is that he is like one of the oldest players in the draft period at 24 Cedric Van Pran 22 the thing about getting a 24 year old though and and Joe Goodberry recently did some really interesting tweets on this topic uh is that you can expect him to come in and play with a higher floor earlier and and so that could be something that would be really nice as an interior option I would say that Bo Limmer despite getting bent in half by Tavondre Sweat at the senior bowl is a solid player to, that you should consider at the back of the third round, top of the fourth round. And if Cooper BB, Zach Zinter are there in real life at this point, I know Zach Zinter had the injury and, and he actually could be there. BB, I'd be shocked. BB feels more like a second round pick than, than an end of third round pick. But if, no we're, if, we, if we would acknowledge that BB is actually here, that would well, easily, easily be the pick. I, I would have probably taken him at 80. You know, yeah. like I, I think he was in consideration at 49. I, I don't want to cheat it too much and give our listeners, but yeah, BB would obviously be the pick. Uh, Matt Conclaves from Pittsburgh, another name to just throw out there. But yeah, I, I say we take Dominic Pooney and, and see what's what's there in round four. So far, if, if you tell me they get a Marius Mims, Keon Coleman, Michael Hall Jr., and Dominic Pooney, the trench is bolstered. You have a, a weapon for Burrow, and you still have six picks to, to bolster the rest of that room. Uh, just throwing it out there, tight end-wise, this Eric is what I'm looking for in the fourth round is which of these guys will, will like Ben Sennett make it to you in the fourth round, or are they comfortable with Eric Hall's medicals to take him in the fourth round? That's why I just wanted to check tight end real quick. Jaheim Bell. That's also. The, those are probably the two guys. There are people on in on Kate Stover. I'm not sure I'm in on him that early. And, and there's like, there's like four or five tight ends. I'm actually in on in this draft. There's, there's not a ton. And that's why I, I'm, I'm so high on the idea of Bowers at 18. If he's there. And we've got one more pick to make here in the fourth round. Xavier Thomas, a, an edge player that the Bengals have expressed interest in from Clemson, picked at 99, just a couple picks after our pick. Brendan Rice goes 102. Cedric Van Pran, 104. Ray Davis, Marshawn Lloyd, a couple of running backs at 105 and 106. Bo Limmer, 109. Eric All, 110. And it looks like if we wanted to go tight end here, we could go Ben Sinnott, who I would happily take in the fourth round, like happily take in the fourth round running back. Just looking at who's available here. The guys that I would, well, the guy that I would consider most is Audric Estime who helped himself quite a bit with a 40 at his pro day. That was much better than what he did uh, at the combine. Tyrone Tracy, Braylon Allen, also interesting names. Will Shipley, Isaac Arendo, also interesting names. But if I were to pick one in the fourth round out of this list, it would be Estime. But I think that with those options at running back, I would be more interested here in in going with the tight end Ben Sennett. Sure, if he's here. I in in there's a lot of buzz around him. So who knows if he is here? I'm comfortable there. I'm comfortable with Audric Estime. Uh, those are the two that I would eye. Uh Leonard Taylor still available for those wondering uh, about defensive line and, and potentially taking one in the mid-rounds. Uh, that's a guy that, that could pay that could be on their radar. Jarvis Brownlee Jr. of Louisville, Cam Hart with his traits at Notre Dame available at corner as well. I think Hart, if you could get him in round five, pick 149. Certainly I'd be in on that. 
McKinley Jackson, Christian Boyd, Makai Wingo, Mason Smith, all available. And I think some of those guys will be available on draft night in fall. Justin Rogers, Jordan Jefferson. And, and that's why when you're looking for that big interior presence, the, the Bengals are, are probably going to wait and take a nose tackle on day three. That said, if Ben Sinnott's there, I think you take him, and I, I think you probably consider him earlier. But the fact that he's still there, I'm totally comfortable doing it. Yeah, and PFF has his average draft position actually much later at 135. I'm happy to take Ben Sinnott here. I think that if this were the way the, the first four rounds went, I would be looking to get back to the defensive interior in the fifth round, most likely looking looking for that nose tackle type in the fifth or sixth round, looking for a corner somewhere in, in this range as well, because there were some corners there with that fourth round pick, Jarvis Brownlee in particular, that I, I would have been happy to take as well. But Amarius Mims, Keon Coleman, Michael Hall, Dominic Cooney, Ben Sinnott, the offense-heavy draft that I think a lot of us are expecting after the the run of premium picks spent on defensive players and we sprinkled in one i think pretty high upside defensive interior player there as well there, there's some upside in this draft james in general with the young keon coleman coming into the nfl amarius mims obviously has traits for days and ben Sinnott, i think could develop into a better player in the nfl a more productive player in the nfl than he was at kansas state yeah, no, I, I think that this is a, a semi-realistic haul with Michael Hall, Coleman, Mims, Pooney, and, and Sinnott, and and maybe it's Sinnott in round three, and and then Pooney falls to round four. I'm not sure the exact order of how it will go, but uh, I could certainly see it. And yeah, I I think that this is a realistic mock. We didn't take the reaches, so to speak, and it gives everyone an idea of of what could happen uh, on draft night. So. Hopefully you enjoyed it. We are 18 days away, 18 days away as we record this on Sunday afternoon. So uh, kind of wild, Jake, that we're, uh, we're almost there. That means we have two more mock draft Mondays. And then two we'll have our, our predictions, our predict, predictive and, mocks. And then we have to figure out what we think will happen instead of just going through these. Uh, a lot's going to change. On the simulators. I think a lot's going to change, but uh, so far. We so have good. a big Georgia Pro Day. April 10 this yeah. week. We're expecting Amarius Mims and Brock Bowers to work out. But that's going to do it for this episode of the Locked On Bengals podcast. Until next time, thanks for listening. Hootay, and have a good one.